Hi, my name is Andrew McLaren. Today we're going to talk about ChatGPT and the top five classroom uses that you can have to empower teachers using this AI. So basically, um, I've looked at a lot of Facebook posts and seen how people have been using this as well as re reading a couple articles. And these are the top five things, easiest to hardest, that I've found that teachers can use right now um, using that ChatGPT to make yourself a better teacher. Um, and so I'll go through them in detail, but basically there's writing um, using bullet points, there's improving your own writing, um, there's creating differentiated uh, lessons for like different Lexile numbers, and then there's also uh, brainstorming lesson ideas because it can't really make a lesson by itself. People think it can, but they are not aligned to your standards if you really look at them, and many of them have just like huge errors in their design that make it so it actually doesn't work. So you'd be very careful about that. But it can help you with like writing grant proposals if you're just like, I am really struggling with what to say here. ChatGPT has got your back. Um, and then we'll do a bonus on reimagining our roles as teachers once this AI has gotten better and we can do more with it. So I really like how you can just put bullet points in ChatGPT and it'll put it into a logical uh, paragraph for you and have like the flow just read really nicely. And so you just can, without even thinking, write emails. Um, you do need to double check it though. I'll show you an example of this. I just um, opened up ChatGPT. There's a ton of videos on how to get this set up, but basically I asked it to write an email for me. I just put in a couple things that I wanted, just three lines, and then it turned it into this nice, pretty decent uh, par uh, letter to the parents. I mean, I would tweak some things slightly, uh, like the rock cycle probably isn't related to the the zoo and then i was like oh could you actually add in something else about them needing to be bringing uh some rock to class um and so it's it's pretty good pretty good i'm pretty happy with like that generic email uh that it just did for me literally took me like less than five minutes to just kind of play around with this and it's got mostly done for me so another relatively easy thing to do is to have it rewrite your own writing for you. Um, you could have students do this to have it like peer edit their their work. Um, you could even have students have the AI do the writing and then they have to grade how the AI did. So they're kind of showing their understanding by assessing the AI's answer. But that's pretty hard to do and kind of down the road. I am excited about that type of stuff. But I think that this is just really nice for the teacher yourself uh, to just be able to make some little improvements to your writing and save some time. Because if you're like a high school teacher and you get letters of recommendation from students, they'll, they'll request like, hey, can you write a letter of rec? And then you're like, sure, what do you want me to include? And then you have to spend a fair amount of time actually writing that out as paragraphs. If they just give you a list of bullet points, you can just plug that in. I wrote this as an example of one um and type that into chat gpt and it was able to give me one that arguably reads a little bit nicer it's a little bit more wordy uh but it's just totally oh, don't worry i also replaced the student's name they're not actually roberta uh, but it totally gave me a good letter here that i think someone else reading this would be more happy reading that than this original one so it's pretty nice in how it can just make things sound better if you have some information and you just want it to be um, a little bit clearer then you could do that i might reword this a little bit because um she, yeah there's some wording in here that isn't isn't my voice so i might want to change it slightly to make it match my voice but that's also a personal preference so i'm actually pretty excited about their ability to differ differentiate so if you go onto chat gpt and you try and get it to do different lexile numbers you can give it like a, a page like a url and it should be able to take that information on there and turn it into like different levels of writing like it as long as it can it, it i i said couldn't you view urls because i've seen it previously do that um, and then it was able to rewrite this. So I gave them this and then it said, okay, thank you. I'm going to rewrite that at this new Lexile number. So it has some issues. It doesn't fully understand what it can and can't do and what you're asking sometimes. Um, but like, this is, this is pretty good. And I would need to double check that this really is Lexile number 800, but, um, it seems like it is. And then this is 1000 and it's written a little bit tougher 
um, a little bit more big words that are hard to um, pronounce for some students or they might not know them. So pretty cool, allows you to create different levels of reading pretty nicely or different levels of instructions. Like if you want a worksheet that you have made and you said, hey, I want this written at this Lexile number, this is pretty good for that. Um, I'd highly recommend it for this use. So I get really excited with this component of ChatGPT because it can help you make lessons that are better than what you could make by yourself, but it can't do that alone. Like you need to double check this because it makes a lot of errors. So it's really good for starting ideas or outlines, but it's absolutely terrible for the NGSS practices. Um, I'm going to go down a little bit of a rabbit hole with this, but bear with me because it's important. Um, if you're trying to align to the NGSS, uh, this is a good example, the standard where I, I asked it to make something and it kept on using the wrong um, practice. So it should be conducting an investigation, but it kept on wanting to do modeling and organelles and all this stuff that teachers spend a lot of time on. So ChatGPT, if it sees the crowd of people doing something, it thinks it should do that as well. And it kept on having a hard time getting the right practice here uh, because honestly, teachers always go really in depth in building models of cells in the middle school level, but that is not what we're supposed to be doing. Um, and you can kind of see that it just kept on doing that. It did actually with some feedback improve what it was doing. Um, and then eventually I got kind of frustrated. I was like, just do the task and show me what you make. And then I'm gonna ask you to make an assessment for that. And then it did a pretty good job, but it started going into some other practices. So conduct an investigation. The practice technically is not supposed to include analyzing and communicating information. Those are other separate practices in the NGSS, but ChatGPT doesn't know that. It just sees conduct investigation and thinks of all the words that are tied to that. And these components are often tied to that, but within the NGSS, that's a separate thing. So if I'm just asking about conducting an investigation, I'm really just interested in like, can they get this experiment started and actually do data collection? I don't care about the analysis at all. So after giving it some more feedback, it was able to get closer. Um, and then I was able to say, hey, like, I don't like this. I do like that. Um, can you try and make this for middle school? And I eventually got something that was pretty decent in terms of its expectations. And I was liking what it was trying to have, have me do, where it's like, okay, how would you actually go about scoring someone's investigations based off of um, all these different expectations that it sees online, right? So it just kind of helps you summarize and play around with stuff nicely. And it can make tables if you're, if you give it some tables or a structure, and then it can kind of improve that over time. It's, it's pretty cool. So I ended up coming up with like a couple categories. I think I just wanted planning, carrying out, and collecting data. I used that and what was in here to make my own rubric on my own. So that's really what you should be doing with ChatGPT. You shouldn't be doing stuff like this where you're like, hey, um, give me a lab because it might make some mistakes in there and you really need to read these carefully. Um, there was one that I did with this with magnets, I think. And it, it was really cool what it wanted to do. I would have never came up with this idea. And if a student suggested to do this, it'd be like 10 out of 10. I don't know what my rubric is, but I'm very happy with it. So it's really interesting how it can give you some good student examples of stuff, but not necessarily a rubric for that. <laughs> like it can do the thing, but it can't tell you why that's good or not. <laughs> One other quick example, you can see this is a pretty good example of a lab that's investigating if something's made of cells or not being alive, um, or if living things are made of cells. I would slightly adjust this so that they have salt, sugar, and grains on different slides that they're observing. Like I wouldn't mix them all together at first. Um, I'd try and do it isolated so you could see what those different ones look like. So it's stuff like that where you really do need to read this and be careful. Uh, there's also multiple choice questions that it will give you where like it gives you the wrong answer or some answers kind of work that it says don't work. So you need to be really careful, especially with multiple choice tests, which I wouldn't be doing anyways in this day and age. Um, but yeah, just be careful. So there's a lot of grants out there for educators, but we just don't have time to spend 
writing all of these grant proposals. Um, and so you can use AI to write parts of it and then read over that based off of the prompt. And it's pretty good at, at doing that. Again, you will have to double check it. But if you're like me and your brain is just completely drained at like 6 p.m., it's the end of the school day, and you're like, okay, I guess I can do a little bit of stuff for my grant now. Um, and your brain's just completely gone. It's kind of nice to have something else do the writing and then just be like, yep, yeah, that looks good. I like that. No, I want to tweak that. So I've grabbed an example um, grant, the whole kids grant. Uh, this is for school gardens. Uh, pretty, pretty good sized grant. You can get it not too bad. I've gotten this before. And you basically need to um, answer some questions and tell them some stuff about your school. So to actually apply and do this, yes, you're going to need to do this yourself. Like the AI is not going to be able to answer uh, where will this garden be located in the school, right? You're going to need to do a little bit of that. But then if you want to do like number three, this question right here about sharing your goals for the garden, that's chat's job. <laughs> you can you can just go ahead and say, hey, I've got a um, here. I think I even used that that exact prompt. Oh, oh it's right here. Yeah. Okay. So chat GPT can be a little bit buggy sometimes because a lot of people are using it. But you can see that it actually gave a pretty decent um, goals an outcome and it's it sounds good totally sounds good so you can also give it a couple things to include and it would include that as well so you can say like hey i want you to um include this where there's free vegetables and teachers using it in lesson plans and so it will adjust that slightly right it's right in there <laughs> and also it keeps it under the character limit. So if you're ever like 1,000 characters, how am I going to keep it under that? You and I have a hard time with that. AI can do that. No problem. It's a quick and easy thing for it to solve. So yeah. So when we're talking about teaching, the main reason AI is good for us is because feedback needs to happen at the right time. Um, if you don't get to answering a student's question, it can sometimes solidify misunderstandings, which can then be more work to undo. So we need timely feedback and we need it that clear and it needs to be consistent. So it's not really consistent yet. So we can't trust it just with students, right? That's why a lot of districts don't, um, as well as like the cheating concerns and whatnot. But I, I really do think this will allow us to be capable of more as teachers. And it will allow us to also give some more of that higher order thinking feedback to students as well and engage with them more on that higher order level while the AI is doing the lower order stuff. So they should be able to learn more in the same amount of time. Um, and it's going to be pretty exciting seeing it. I'm, I'm looking forward to my artificial intelligent TA um, giving me some things to look at instead of me having to grade every single one it can be like hey you might want to highlight these with the students tomorrow what do you think and then we can collaborate and work on it thank you for mclearning with me before you go please check out the following services that i offer with my business so if you click the link in my videos this goes to my website i might be changing it from podia because i'm no longer doing the interactive videos for sale i might put those up for free um, but most of my other services are linked here. So you can see that I've got like a Teachers Pay Teachers and a Wiseant. Um, the Teachers Pay Teachers has a lot of my assessments that I have for like the NGSS, as well as lessons that I made when I was actually a teacher in the classroom. So I've got quite a few things like CERs and other things on there. Um, if you want to get one-on-one -on -one live support from me, either like with science or like working on um, like teaching support lessons and that kind of stuff, uh, you can sign up through Wiseant. I have a link to there where you can contact me there um, and we can schedule hourly appointments. Um, and I've got a few other things on here like a Facebook page um, and our social media. And if you're interested in getting professional development with me for like a team of teachers, a whole page with information on that. So yeah, feel free to check that out. Um, thank you.